What's good, everybody, and welcome back to the channel for a zero overall rebuild of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And even more than that, a zero overall draft only rebuild here on MLB The Show 23. Of course, the game just recently dropped. And of course, everyone on the team is technically one overall, but if you look at the ratings, they're all zero. And the reason I wanted to do a rebuild like this is, you know, we've got our athletics franchise going on, and it gives me an opportunity to go through a lot of drafts here in the game. I've already done some prior to our first draft in that franchise so that I'm in. I have just more knowledge about the draft and how it works. And so we can make the best draft possible because, you know, if we draft poorly in a, in a, in a video like this, that's fine. It's just one video. If we draft poorly in our athletics franchise, it's going to just be bad for us in the long run. So I want to make sure that we get a good draft in that franchise. And I think the best way to do that is to practice a little bit. And so um, one thing I want to talk about is just kind of where our scouts are at here for year one. And I think we're in a pretty good spot, actually. I'm really excited about this scout setup. And honestly, this is kind of the setup that I wish we would have used to start the year for the athletics. Um, but, you know, typically in the past, I've tried to find like one guy that was good at everything. One guy that had, you know, like high efficiency pitchers in discovery. And then the other guy who had high position players discovery and efficiency. But, and then, you know, I'd use the first few weeks for everyone to discover some prospects because I tried to get 80 plus discovery on everyone. And it turns out just by random chance, we were able to do that here again. But I think the better option to go is to find a cheap scout, like 90,000 or under, probably just basically the, the cheapest scout you can find with 90 plus discovery, which is this guy here making 87. I mean, you could go no, that's the same. They the same amount. So Francis McKnight, all we're going to have him do, there's 14 scouting weeks for at least the first 13, because in week 14, if you discover somebody but have, don't have the opportunity to scout them, how valuable is it? But for 13 weeks, all we're going to have him do is discover, discover, discover. He's not efficient. He's not going to be able to scout pitchers, but what he can do is discover very well. And he's cheap. And then with our second scout, I think... Finding somebody around that 100K that has high efficiency and high, really high of either pitchers or position players. In this case, it is pitchers. 90 plus in both of those categories and whatever you can get in the others. And then have one scout who's really high efficiency and really high in the other category that you didn't get with this 100K scout. So in this case, 98 efficiency, 97 position. But since he's the highest paid, you also want him to be able to do the other position as in pitchers. I typically think you should have two scouts that generally can do pitchers because there are some drafts in this game that are very, very pitcher heavy. And so if you only have one scout that's really good at scouting pitchers, you're probably not going to be able to scout as much as you want. Um, that's just kind of the nature of the game where sometimes like the first two rounds are just littered with pitchers and there's very few position players that are actually worth a pick until like the mid rounds. Um, not my favorite drafts. I, I I like to draft position players, but so there we have it. I think we have like the perfect scouting setup for a video like this. And it's probably something, a setup that I'll try to lean more into in future years with the athletics. So uh, I'm not going to like show you guys all the scouting. I'll probably just kind of skip to the draft and we'll see where the players are at. So. I will see you in draft number one. Now here at the draft, let's get into it. Not gonna add people to my queue. I kinda already have an idea of what I want to do here. So let's hop into it without any delay here. Turns out um, that extra week for Russ Spears did actually change our opinion of him a little bit. As he's now maybe looking a little bit more like that generational prospect that I thought he might be and so Pirates up here with our second pick and the draft 
Uh, a couple of guys that I really wanted to fall to us didn't. Alexi Serrano was one of them. This one was a far fetch. I wasn't really expecting him to, but I was kind of hoping he went at five. And then the guy I actually really wanted to draft in this spot was Chris Cortez, a catcher with a 90 to 95 potential and 60 to 65 overall. I thought that was a slam dunk kind of pick, but went at 28. So honestly, it wasn't even that close to us, but let's see who is the best left on the board. We've got a player here in Kevin Light at center field who has the potential to be a good fielder, but I don't know if his hitting would make me feel good about drafting him this highly. I think Andreas Alzado gonna be confidently a good pitcher in your rotation. I don't know if he has the potential to really be an ace. None of his per nines are particularly high, but um, if you can a guy you're confident can be part of your rotation, I'm fine with that with our second round pick. Here with the third round pick, we have two picks in like the next... Um, in the next five picks. So I think we've got two really, oh my goodness, Freddie Costa's walks per nine look incredible. Now his potential isn't gonna be anything great. 79 to 84, I really like that. So maybe we go, I have a closing pitcher who, are, who our scouts say is the 11th best player in the class. We just don't have him scouted at all. So these ranges are really big. They're, you know, 24. So we really don't know much about this player. Kevin Light, not a great bat. The guy I like the most, honestly, even though his potential isn't great, um, not everybody needs to be like the A potential guys. Let's get some guys that I think are gonna, based on what we see here, he's gonna be really good. In simulation walks for nine is really. So let's just draft Eddie Costa. With this next pick, we drafted two starting pitchers. So I think it's kind of between Mora and Kevin Light here. We've scouted Kevin Light, so I'm going to draft him here, despite the fact that he's not the best hitter. Hopefully that uh, closing pitcher is still available. He is not. Still have some guys not ranked that are high on our board. Um, let's see who they are here. Injured for Doyle, so that's a no-go. Injured for Bugler, so that's a no-go. And then not the highest potential here for TJ Gonzalez. Looks to be a decent contact hitter. Maybe has the potential to be a decent fielder as well. Um, we'll go for it. In terms of guys we've scouted, there's really not anybody with much potential left. But, you know, Andreas Esposito is a guy that we know at least is going to be solid, has a lot of, you know, interest in signing with us. So why not at pick 138? And with our last pick, we're just going to go somebody who has some really high potential. First baseman, Richard Fraser. We'll put him on the queue. My fielder, Jake De La Rosa. No. Third baseman, Calvin Fox. 85 to 99. Put him on the queue. Howard Burgos. You know, I, I do want to take a shot at catcher. 
could be a total miss, but I just want to take I just want to take shots there until we find one that hits. I feel like it's really hard to hit at catcher. So hard burgers, you are our six round pick. Maybe that third baseman was a better pick. This didn't look like a great hitter though. Able to now view our draft picks. We were able to get everyone signed. It took until like the last deadline to get our six round pick, but we got it. Oh baby, I see that 90 potential over at catcher. That's a win, but even more importantly, Russ Spears was indeed a generational prospect. 81 overall, 99 potential. Now, my plan for this is basically until I get 26 players to just keep everyone at double A, this guy's gonna crush double A so hard. He's gonna be like a 90 overall player in double A. That's kind of nuts. But Andreas Calzado has a little ways to go. Well-rounded player has no defined strengths though, which is kind of why I think he's more of like a mid-rotation pitcher than like a future ace. So still ace is on our board for later, but man, I, Freddie Costa, home runs per nine and strikeouts per nine, not great. That needs to improve for sure, but coming in with 87 walks per nine is something. That 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 is something to behold. 55 overall for Kevin Light, but he has 90 potential. TJ Gonzalez at second base. Um, he's okay. Uh, Andreas Esposito. He's okay. Maybe like a long reliever, maybe fifth guy in the rotation. We'll see where his ratings end up. And then Howard Burgos. Um, a long, long way to go, but that's why I wanted to get catcher early because I feel like this is the kind of catcher build you get a lot where they're terrible. They have the potential, but it's going to take them four or five years to get there. It's going to take four or five years to get 26 players in the draft. So I'm fine to get that part out of the way early. So pretty solid draft. I do want to check on one player here. Um, no, I want to check really on two players. One was the right fielder, Serrano. So he's a 69 with 96 potential. Really, really good player. Switch hitter. Got a really good bat. Obviously not as good as our player, but we had him as the second best player in the draft, and I think that was correct. And then Chris Cortez. Yeah, I really, really wish this was our second round pick. That's the kind of catcher that you really want. Like somebody that's not as far away, still has the potential. So going to be like a really good contact hitting uh, catcher. So really good pick there by the Astros. And honestly, I have nothing really to show you until draft two. So let's get to draft two. And here we are ready for draft number two. Uh, let's hop into it, get a preview of what we're talking about here and kind of said at the beginning of this video sometimes there are very very pitcher heavy drafts well this is one Let's just take a look at our team board pitchers are the top one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so the, our top nine is all pitchers in this draft so uh didn't really get a lot of help towards like the bullpen and stuff last draft this draft looks like we'll, we'll have the opportunity to do so and so um let's let, let's hop into it uh we were terrible last year so we should have a good pick um have the number two pick let's see who the open athletics open athletics i mean the number one pick in year two is is exciting and they take mcmahon who was somebody that we scouted a decent bit, did not think he was the best pitcher in this draft, but those ratings still look pretty good. And now, so the best starter we have in this draft is looking like Emilio Sosa, a lefty pitcher that has high strikeout potential, decent walks per nine. I think he is somebody that we'll consider here. The thing with this draft is we have a lot of pitchers, especially a lot of pitchers that are, you know, not ranked or, you know, 50s here, 90s here. There's only one kind of position player that we really like in this class. So if we want to take a position player, we probably have to take it here. And so Scott Papp, maybe not the most exciting, you know, this is the number two pick in the draft, you know, 
probably not worse not worth the number two pick in the draft but just because we have so many pitchers scouted i think we actually will take scott Papp here um just because like i said the scarcity of good position players in this draft is kind of scary get the nice little uh, whatever you call it, the the animation here when you get the top three picks, something that I imagine we'll have maybe in this rebuild. If we're being honest, I don't know if the draft only rebuild is really all that possible in this game without going like 20 years. Here we go, yeah. All right, so the number two player on our board did go, but fret not, we still have a lot of players that we like in this draft, a lot of starting pitchers. Uh, Tom Wood looks pretty good. Um, Reggie Powell here looks decent as well. Locks per nine is really good on Malcolm Clemente here. Hits per nine isn't looking all that good, but I do like him quite a bit. I like this guy as well. We do need to start taking some picks in the bullpen. I just haven't been impressed. We, we scouted a lot more bullpen players in this draft. I just wasn't very impressed. What are these guys is looking to be rated now? So 51 to 66, 50 to 65, 49 to 64, a little worse. And then 58 to 70. So this guy has the highest like Picks right now. Oh, we have back to back picks. We're taking two players. I think Clemente is going to be one. And then probably Tom Wood here. So Tom Wood. And next pick, Clemente. Two starting pitchers. And let's get further into this draft. Still another starting pitcher um, on the board here. That's. Like I said, it was like an insanely pitcher heavy draft. This guy's got really good strikeout potential. I like that. Um, here with pick 75, so still good value for where we thought he was, but you have a top 10 player that our scouts think in this draft still on the board. We'll take him here. Um, I guess we're just drafting all starting pitchers in this draft. And you know what? I don't hate it. Um, for this one though, we'll go with a reliever. Gotta start getting some, some bullpen arms in here. And now with, what is this? This is our last pick. Okay, so not ranked 50, 43 starting pitcher. I mean, it's hard to ignore that honestly, but See if there's an intriguing position player. Douglas Rossi. We just go with, you know, second year in a row. Last pick catcher. Intriguing potential here from John Newman. 22 years old, opted out of his doctor's exam. Intriguing power potential. We just haven't, we've only drafted one guy really with any potential of power. I'm just gonna take a swing at a power guy here in John Newman and that will be how we finish out draft number two. I'll see you at signing to see how we did. All right, once again, took until the deadline, but we were able to get everyone signed. Let's see how questionable of a decision it was to get Scott Papp. 81 potential is all. No A potential in this entire class. It was honestly, it wasn't the best class if we're being honest. Um, so I didn't, I didn't love the class. Didn't ended up not getting a great no draft out of it 
So really strong start. I think not quite as good here in year two, but I mean, th these guys will be players, right? Like Scott Pat is still gonna be a player. Easy, easy right field player for us uh, in the future. 81, poten 81 potential is not like the worst, you know what I mean? So don't love the class, don't hate it. Let's just see kind of, you know, that's a closing pitcher. We're not gonna spend high pick on that. Um, what did we miss out on? Let's see here. Right fielder with some good potential later. I'm just looking at this class, it doesn't look great. Christopher Baker has potential, but he's not a hitter. Um, Dan Scott, great velocity, but his per nines are pretty terrible. I don't know, just looking through this draft so far, I... Just think it was not the best class in general. Craft could have been a good late round swing. Emilio Sosa, pretty solid, but yeah, no like big time players that we missed out on really. Maybe here DJ Hatfield actually, good contact hitter. Fielding's not great though, only 60 overall, but I guess you could say You'd rather take him over the center fielder for sure. And so I'm gonna get to the end of the year. We'll look at the stats for our players because now that we actually have some players that we're gonna track stats for, let's see how they're developing. And then we'll get to draft three. All right, here we are at the end of year two. Let's take a look at the development of the players that we drafted, starting here with Russ Spears, already up to 85 overall obviously he's gonna rake here in in double in double a honestly maybe a little bit less than i thought but i mean 324 with 32 home runs 90 batted in had 500 at bats so actually you know with the at bats really good numbers freddie costa here had a 327 era 1.15 whip um Good, good increases to his per nines. Nothing went down. You love to see it. TJ Gonzalez at second base. Lost a little bit of power, but his contact went up. Fielding went up. He had hit 250, six home runs, 50 RBIs. Under a seven OPS, Andreas Esposito. He not great for a three ERA 1.5 whip. Per nines going up nicely though. Andreas Calzado, his per nines went up pretty good. 3-3 ERA, 1-3-6 whip. Kevin Light, you know, not much of a hitter, but he is improving. Plus three to all of his hitting. I'll take that. 2-4-4 average, not terrible. Did not hit a home run, but um, you know, wasn't expecting much out of his hitting. These are guys that I had to sign just because I needed to meet meet a, a minimum amount of uh, pitchers. So Howard Burgos getting uh, pretty good at hitting plus six power versus lefties in terms of stats. Two two eight six home runs for eight RBIs. OPS is six oh three. Um. Not a good wins above replacement player, but I mean, he's 49 overall, so can't really expect too much of him. This guy's out here improving a bunch. Joe Random, catcher up to 10 overall after two seasons. The boys are putting in some work, but uh, obviously Russ Spears is an MLB caliber player, but he's going to be in double A for some time. He's going to come up in the MLB and already be like 99 overall. It's going to be kind of, kind of sick, so... Uh, with that out of the way, let's get into draft number three. All right, here we are, 2025 MLB draft. This is a pretty interesting one. Our top rated player is a pitcher who looks really good, honestly. Um, starting velocity is not gonna be great. I feel like with the velocity, you can't really look at the future too much. I feel like velocity doesn't actually increase as much as the scattering report says it does, but really high strikeouts and walks per nine is something i like to see gonna have high break as well um i like this player a lot juan pinero looks like a really good contact hitter and fielder so some two-way impact with him 
I like him a lot. And then also Diego Gonzalez. Um, contact versus lefties is going to be really good. Maybe not quite as much of a... Uh, Uh, what do you call it? Uh, a power hitter, but switch hitting shortstop is somebody that I like. Somebody with some level of hitting potential. Haven't drafted a shortstop yet, so he's pretty high on my board. And then there's one more guy, Otto Roush here. In terms of if you if we just want to bat in this draft, this guy looks like he's got the best one available. Power versus righties isn't quite there, but contact versus right is really good and then it looks like more of a balanced contact and power hitter um did you know opt out of his his uh his doctor exam though so we don't know whether or not he is healthy but i think we've got some really good uh position players i tried to scout some relievers but andres lopez Really good pitcher, but also I think some good potential bats here at position players as well. Unfortunately, none of these players look like they'll probably be available. Um, you know, because they're all actually rated. We don't have any like diamonds in the rough. We could potentially be there in the second round. They're all probably going in the first. So we have to figure out which one we want the most and kind of go from there. Um, I think the shortstop and the first baseman probably have, you know, the most interest from me, but we have all the way down at pick seven this year, so they have to make it to us. I have, you know, five players that I'd really like to take. I, we just gotta hope that at least one of them is there at seven. Let's get underway. These first three picks, Let's see who goes off the board for us. And I can't tell from the base cam. Not a player that was on our board, so that's good. Good start there. Is it going to be one of the players we wanted to draft here at two? It is Juan Pinero. So this is the guy in terms of two way impact, has contact, has. Going there at two. It was, he was in my top three. It was the first baseman, the shortstop, and him. So as long as we can maybe get one of the shortstop or the first baseman, I'll be happy. And another guy not on our board, guys. So let's simulate to our pick. And none of the players that I wanted have gone. It's a bunch of pitchers. So. Do we take Otto Rash? Let's see, 76 to 91 potential, 63 to 78 overall. So probably going to be a B potential guy. Not much of a fielder. Um, switch hitter. Both of these guys that are left are actually switch hitters. Um, Archie Carlisle has more interest in us. We're gonna go with Archie Carlisle here, I think. 16. So their their potentials are the same, 76 to 91. And then Archie Carlisle, we know is healthy and his overall is a little bit higher. So Archie Carlisle will be the pick in this draft. Welcome to the squad. We get our first shortstop here. Now here at the top of the second round, it looks like that pitcher that we, oh no, this is, here we go. So let's go on team rank here. Looks like the guys that we scouted that we really liked are already gone. I really went like top of the draft and then relief pitching. And so, I feel like we need to add to our bullpen here. Let's see, Jimmy Lyon. 
opted out of his doctor's exam. We have 70, 71 to 86 potential. Um, I'm just trying to take a look at what we've already drafted, honestly. Let's see what our, our top rated player is a, a reliever that we haven't scouted. I mean, from these, he looks really good. We just take a shot on Aaron Gonzalez. I didn't scout him because he was a 16th player. I feel like we need like a closer, right? This guy has the potential to be. We just His ranges are so massive. We have no idea what this player is. In terms of scouted players, Rick Hatfield. He just looks like a lot of pitchers that we have on this team already, you know what I mean? We drafted so many, you know, starting level pitchers. Here's a closing pitcher we have scouted. Scouts say he's the 62nd player in the draft. We have a much more, you know, dense. So I think we might take both. Let's, I think we take the reliever and hope that Alberto Ramirez is still available because we have a better idea that he's at least going to be solid. Whereas the other guy, it's kind of more of just like a, let's take a chance on him. Aaron Gonzalez will be our second round pick. Typically don't, you know, draft guys that we haven't scouted at all um, that early, but that closing picture is still here. Uh, we have two picks in a row. Oh, got to simulate to our picks. We actually don't know if he's there. Let's see if he is now. Um, scouted. He is still here. Okay, so let's draft him. And then let's see. Um, now, now I'm a little bit more inclined to draft a guy like Rick Hatfield, although we know he doesn't have a potential. We have not drafted an a potential pitcher in, in here yet. So like we still haven't really found our ace and that's kind of what I'm waiting for in terms of drafting a A, um, sorry, I'm losing my track of thought. for a starting pitcher. I, I want to drive like a guy that I think is going to be an ace, that pitcher. I think we have kind of the rest of our rotation. We just really need one more starting pitcher. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to the point where we can call everybody up to the MLB, get that 26 man roster as soon as we can. Um, Hatfield, if he's still there next pick, I, I guess we'll take him, but I'm thinking about was that this guy right here, Jack Lee, bullpen guy. Uh, just haven't really drafted it much yet, so I'm, I'm trying to fill that up now. So it looks like we won't have a chance to draft that one pitcher, but we have Luke Nobles here. Solid enough looking. 62 to 84, so probably going to be C potential. I don't know if I like that. Let's uh, let's see who's has at least like a bigger range. Like I'd rather take a bigger shot. We have we have no idea who Cleveland Bryant is, but he could be good, you know. So that's more of a shot I'm I'm willing to take than just a guy that we know is okay. Juan Silas here. Let's take a shot on Juan. Wait, actually, Noblis. So Bryant's rated and the other guy's not rated. So I'm actually just gonna take a shot here first. And then if the second baseman is still there, we'll take him. There we go, he is. Let's take him, Juan Salas is there. Now let's get to round six. Scouted players. Is there anybody that we've scouted that has he's between 75 and 80 potential? Another bullpen arm. A bunch of relief pitchers in this draft. Um, but I'm okay with it. That will be the end of this fourth draft. I'll sign them and we'll see how good we did. We are getting close every time. It has taken me till the deadline every time to get like the last piece or two, but we continue to be able to sign everyone. Let's take a look at our drafts. We got 74 with 85 potential here with Archie Carlisle. Um, 
gonna have potential to be good hitter, good fielder, speed all around. Not like the high end player, but I feel pretty safe that he's gonna be a good player. So you like that. And then we went heavy into the bullpen and we got a bunch of C potential guys. It is what it is. That's kind of the risky take when you draft a bunch of relievers. Um, we're getting to the point where we almost have like a full team. So I had to fill up a bullpen. Um, ended up not getting like the best players, but they're gonna play on the team for us. So um, I think actually after this draft, we might even have enough to call everybody up to the MLB next season, if not one more draft. I'll see you at the end of this year though, to see how the players we already have drafted are progressing. Actually, before we get there, I have one more thing to say. Otto Roche is the other guy that we were considering. You know, he's a 71, 84. So I think between the two, we made the right decision. Both, I think, would have perfectly done what we wanted them to. Um, but I think our search stops a little bit better. Juan Pinero is the other guy that, you know, was high on the list. That, that was kind of the top three. Um, he ends up 68 with 89 potential, a little bit lower now. A little bit more upside, doesn't quite have the power hitting that these guys have but probably going to be a better fielder they were all kind of i think in a similar vein i think i had juan pinero you know roosh and the guy that we got i can't even remember his name right now all in similar buckets and i think they are in pretty similar buckets uh pinero does have you know four higher potential than either of them though so he's probably the best and then andres lopez was the guy that our scouts had at number one overall and he ends up he does have a potential just right on the edge though, low hits per nine. So I don't know if he was quite the ace caliber pitcher that I was looking for. So at the end of the day, of the picks that were available to me because Pinero wasn't, I think I actually still made the best selection that was available at pick number seven. All right, here we are at the end of the season. Let's take a look at some of the best players on our team. Uh, well, I guess everybody on our team and how they did. Russ Spears continues to develop. He's up to 89 overall. Definitely ready to make the jump to the, to the MLB. Um, still, like, not quite the average that you'd expect in the home runs. Only had 281 at-bats, though. So you'd like to get him up to the major leagues, get him more at-bats. Uh, Freddy Costa here. Pretty good upgrades for him. Up to 70 overall, our best pitcher, second best player. TJ Gonzalez, really good year hitting the ball. He's got like plus 20 almost in his hitting stats. So he's looking decent. Tom Wood, nice upgrades to his, you know, hits per nine. One nine ERA, sub one whip. I didn't look at cost of stats, two four nine, one one two. And then Gonzalez batting 283 with 11 home runs. Um, Andreas Still developing nicely. 363 whip, 149 ERA, not as good. Andreas Esposito, minus one in terms of a walks per nine. ERA is the worst so far that we've seen. Scott Papp out here actually decreasing by five in his contact versus the lefties, but up by seven in his power. Um, 252. Uh, Malcolm Clemente here. Nice upgrades to his per nines, 279 ERA. Nice whip as well. Kevin Light. Um, not as great against, why are why are we struggling against contact versus lefties? I don't know why, 262, six home runs, 40 RBIs. Felipe Robles out here. Um, decent season. John Newman at first base. Uh, getting a little bit better with his contact. Uh, sorry, with his power. Still needs to work on that contact a lot, though. And then 339-13 whip. Solace here. Uh, 458 with 145. Burgos continues to develop some nice hitting upgrades for him. 278. Um, I think we're... I think based on what I saw, and then these are a couple of guys that I just needed to sign to hit the the pitcher minimum, but I think based on how we still need about maybe one more year after this worth of draft picks, so probably one more year in the minors for this team. 
And then, then we're talking about making this team an MLB team. That's that's a scary thought. All right, here we are at the draft once again. I have my board figured out. Uh, I have a few picks. I think these top four are really what I want in round one. Quick preview of them, Tony Hickman. Looks like he can be another one of these generational type talents. We can get a second on the squad. And considering, you know, we're going to be playing these guys in the MLB, getting somebody that's that good from the rip will be really awesome. Campanaris, I just kind of made a list of needs that we need to be able to get to the MLB next year. Uh, I think if there is an ace caliber pitcher, like a future ace pitcher, that's at the top of the list. Outfield is second, and then first base third, and another catcher is fourth. Those are kind of the four things I'd like to hit in this draft. Campanaris is one of two guys that I think could have ace potential, the other one being Ross Sherman. Um, I think they're both, they, they both have really good potential to be in the 90s, look like they could have velocity. And then Bernando Lopez just looks like a good two-way contact fielder kind of player in case things go wrong. And one of these three players doesn't make it to our pick, so let's get into it. Tony Hickman is still on the board, the generational player. It looks like we might be able to get him here at four, which would be pretty big time. He could play anywhere in the outfield. Um, we could have him play center or left, or kind of the two positions I could see him playing. Do we take him or do we take this pitcher? Walks per nine looks really good on Campanaris. But you, you got to take, you got to. As much as I do think Campanaris is like one of the few chances we've had at maybe an ace level pitcher, uh, I think Hickman, you, you, you just go for the guy who you think is going to be a generational player. We go Hickman here in the first round. Let's see what's available in the second. Here in the second now, looks like so Campanaris did go. No surprise, he was supposed to be a first round pick. Let's just kind of take a look here. Um, we got a guy who we think is a top five player in the class. I just think that range is still too wide, like 45 to 67. This could be a guy that's going to take a million years to get in the league. Um, we have a couple of we have a closer here. We have a couple of closers that I like here that I circled for maybe being here in the second round. We did get a closer last year, but he only has C potential. This is a guy who is, from our scouting, going to have at least 85 potential. Uh, going to come in, have really high strikeout. And then Luis Martinez is going to be a little bit further away, but he also has a minimum from what it looks like of 85 potential. Luis Martinez isn't ranked. Mm. We risk. So Bernardo Lopez also, well, the second baseman is also gone. So I think just looking at my board here, our best option is probably one of these closers. There's a first baseman I like a little bit later. Uh, I didn't end up liking any really the catchers. Steve Sable, it's kind of a low overall, but his potential is a minimum of 80. Looks to at least be a good contact hitter. Maybe not so much power, but solid uh, fielding as well. Not that fielding is like used at first base all that much. He does have a secondary position of catcher, so we could kind of maybe get a little bit of first base and catcher together. So I really like this player with our next pick. Um... There's also a reliever I like here in Zach Williams. Let's take a look here. Gonna have good velocity. Walks per nine doesn't look too good though. I think we go with this closer who's gonna look like he's gonna be in the 60s in the overall. 
minimum of 85 potential. He did opt out of his, his doctor's exam. I think we got ourselves a really high level closer prospect here. And so we have this pick here. Now at 30, oh, so we have the very next pick, sick. Um, I was like, oh, nobody from our board went, I think. Let's take a look here at a starter. Maybe there's a starter I like in Berg. That's more of a next round pick though. Also has low walks per nine, so maybe not so much. Maybe here we go with the reliever who we have, you know, 23rd on our board. I think that's not a bad option. So bullpen, I know it was risky to, to hammer it here when it didn't really work for us last time. I think we're doing fine. This will be Steve Sable. He has first base and catcher potential. Uh, those he kind of knocks out two things with one stone here now. I think if we could get a catcher, no, no catchers that we scattered are remaining. It's not something we are like able to get too much of. We're really just taking a shot in the dark. Let's take Jay Armstrong here. A little bit older, so we have more of an idea. And he'll be our fourth round pick. So really only scouted for the first few rounds. Wanted to make sure we got the players that we needed. Um, now let's do team ranks, see what all is available. We can go a reliever again. We can go Fernando Gonzalez. Don't know if I love that. Pedro Sanchez here. Take another swing at starting pitcher. Don't mind Hamlin here. Really low strikeouts per nine for, for Sanchez. Um, let's see, this is pick. Oh, this, this isn't even our pick. I need to simulate to our pick. Okay, here we go. Sanchez, so Hamlin. I think looked pretty good. We'll go Hamlin here, and then if the reliever's still there after that, we'll go there. In the sixth, he is. We'll take him. Pitcher heavy again, but I think we, we're starting to fill up a lot of these position spots, so. And I feel like the pitchers that we've gotten are a little bit underwhelming, especially in the bullpen, so if we can get improvements on them with these draft picks. Let's uh, go ahead, exit this draft and see just how good we did once I signed these players. And for the first time here, we were able to sign all of our draft picks and it didn't even take remotely close to the finish line. No stress involved. Everybody agreed pretty early in the process. Even got ourselves a little bit of money left over. Let's go ahead and view this draft class. Okay. Tony Hickman, we knew, okay. So Elton Eaton, 68 with 94 potential. Control is really low though, so you gotta watch out for that. But his per nines are in a really good spot. Holy. Okay, Eaton. Hickman, just like we thought. Zach Williams ended up being really good. Got ourselves a B potential bullpen guy. Um, Sable, though, easily the most surprising here. He was like, I was like, this guy, I think even his overall is higher than I thought. I thought his max was like mid 50s or something. So our scouts were actually selling these guys short. Then even Jay Armstrong, not an MOB player right now, but still B potential. Hamlin, swing and a miss, that's fine. And then Garrett Brock, even like 77 for, for a bullpen pitcher isn't even that bad. Holy, easily our best 
draft class since the beginning. <laughs> um, and at a time when we really knew that when we were going to start actually calling these players up to the MLB and seeing if they can develop there. So awesome draft. We'll catch up at the end of the year when we look at these player stats once more. Here we are at the end of the year. Let's take a look at our players and where they stand. Russ Spears up to a 93 overall. Going to be an instant impact player. His power versus lefties is down six, but his contact versus lefties is up 12. I will look, like he's our power guy, so I'd like him to keep power. But I mean, he's going to be an instant impact hitter as soon as he gets in the league. Going to be a positive, you know, guy in the three. Uh, Archie Carlisle did not hit lefties well at all, despite being a switch hitter this year. Looks like hit righties just fine, though. And that's, of course, where we'll face most of the players. Pretty cost looks like he got injured. Probably should just turn injuries off for a franchise like this. Home runs per nine, really low, and that's going to be our ace next year. That is concerning. Um, TJ Gonzalez, he is hitting righties better. I guess, I don't know, is there just like a sick lefty that's in our uh, division down at double A? But Tom Wood, his per nines are in a pretty good spot. He just doesn't have much velocity or break. Um, and then Andreas Calzado, first pitcher that we drafted, his Per nines are steadily increasing. I keep forgetting to, I'm only looking at like their stats increase, not what they did. 319 with 129 ERA. Got a 253 with 108. We got uh, 255, 10 home runs. Costa got himself a 258 with just over one whip. Carlisle only batted 215 at. Um, at double A, so I imagine it's gonna be a bit of a struggle. About 332, 22 home runs, 91 RBIs at 500 at bats. For Spears, he is ready for the big leagues for sure. Did I ever look at Tom? Yeah, I think I did. Let's look at Cleveland Bryant here, one of our better relievers. Wow, sub one ERA, you love to see it. Welcome Clemente, sub three ERA, 126 whip. Andreas Esposito struggled a little bit last year. Looked like he rebounded a bit. Scott Papp. Those uh, increased. Looks like he's going to come in and at least be able to hit for contact decently well. Um, and then Kevin Light. Um, he's going to play for us. Uh, Aaron Gonzalez. 1-2-1 one, one with a 1-1-1 one, one, one ER, uh, whip. Felipe Robles. So that's kind of most of the team here. I guess here's our closer, sub one ERA, 103 whip. And then you got another reliever here. So all these guys, they're all getting called up. Even Howard Burgos at 57 overall. We are going from a zero overall team to a team made up of entirely players that we've drafted. They're definitely not going to be a good MLB team. Not even close. There's really one player who's a good MLB player. And then that's really it. So it's going to be a struggle. But we have built a 26-man roster through the draft. How to see them play in the MLB. We'll see how it goes. I don't imagine it's going to be all that spectacular. But uh, I guess I'll see you at the start of next season and we'll see how it goes. Here on the clock in the first round, Luis Lopez goes just out of us. He was pretty high on our board. But I think my favorite player is Buster Chavez nonetheless. Looking to have good velocity, high strikeouts for nine, no apparent weakness. This might be our chance to finally draft our potential ace. Buster Chavez, welcome to the Pirates. Swimming ahead to our next pick. Pretty much everybody is off the board. Uh, I did most of my scouting in the first round. It was very, very pitcher heavy, and I wanted to find the best one that could potentially become an ace in the future. So uh, we're down to like one pitcher that I like, don't love. 
um, just because his potential is low. But um, he is projected to go, so he's might not make it to our next spot. But this second baseman, Delgado, who I was looking at, might not make it either. We just took a pitcher. We'll take the second baseman if if that uh, pitcher is still there. He is not. Yeah, so we didn't uh, scout too well into the later parts of this draft. We do have a guy here in Alexis Delgado who doesn't look too bad at first base though. So surprised I didn't put him on my board. Let's draft Delgado. Next up here in the third round, only got a couple guys that we've scouted left. Another first baseman as well as a reliever. We'll, we'll take a reliever. And then that first baseman ended up going. So at this point, we're just taking a flyer on some guys. Um, we have a guy who's not ranked. Let's go with Novoa here. If they're on coming up, we'll take another reliever. Uh, just. With relievers, I feel like you just got to take a bunch of shots because you're going to miss most of them. But uh, we'll go with Mercado here in the sixth. And that will be the end of this draft. Um, I'll see you at signings. And then yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how good we did. So at this point in the recording, I accidentally muted my mic without recording it without uh sorry noticing it so we'll have a portion of this video i ended up noticing later but we're gonna have to do a little bit of this video just kind of post edit commentary buster chavez looking just as good as i hoped he would Johnny delgado johnny delgado excuse me is also pretty solid apart from that nothing too special in this draft class but Honestly, Buster Chavez being what looks to be a potential future ace with all of his per nines at least at 57, 84 velocity, 66 control, 61 break, like nothing's below 57. Even has a decent bit of stamina. I think he's easily our best pitching prospect. Also, of course, has the highest potential as none of our other uh, starting pitchers currently have a potential. You know, a lot having the high, high 80s for the high Bs, but... Uh, Coming in already at 75 overall, he can play an instant impact in the rotation. I think Buster Chavez is about as good as we could do. So, super excited about that draft pick. Depth of the class maybe not there, but I'll take the top end talent. Now at the end of the season, still not quite, you know, the playoff caliber team. Still have a lot of developing to do. Russ Spears continues to develop. 90s in contact for both right and left is beautiful. Also has great power against righties more than lefties, which is a little surprising, but uh, 29 home runs, you know, on a 296 average, 867 OPS. In his first year in the MLB, that's really good. Tony Hickman, Really good contact versus lefties, but not as much versus righties. Um, we're seeing, you know, the players do better when it's the same hand they're pitching against, which isn't the norm, but, I mean, really solid, if unspectacular, debut for him. Carlisle, our shortstop, plus eight power versus righties. Uh, didn't get much improvement against lefties, though. Sub 200 batting average. Nah, exactly what you like. Sub 6 OPS. Freddy Costa, however, really solid first year. No complaints here. Just over a 3 ERA with a low one. Uh, one whip. I mean, mid threes here for Wood is also good. 1-2-5 whip. Not the worst. 
TJ Gonzalez. Solid stats here. 264. Got eight homers in there. Uh, batted across 59 runners. Scott Papp out in right field. Plus 10 power versus lefties. You love to see it. Somebody that actually hit, you know, the, the opposite hand well. Uh, OPS above eight. That's really exciting to see. Elton Eaton closed for us. 3 6 1 ERA is not bad. One for a whip. Maybe you'd like that to be a little bit better, but uh, 4 5 7 ERA, not the best here. Malcolm Clemente, nearly a 6 ERA. Let's start getting down the list here. We're seeing some higher ERAs above 5 here for Bryant. Uh, Kevin Light didn't get much contact versus lefties. Again, I don't know why, but uh, plus five power to both. Still doesn't really have power. I was hoping to see his contact maybe develop a little bit more. Uh, hit for hit 2200, sub six OPS. Not great. Esposito, high ERA, high whip. Um, Aaron Gonzalez up next. Sub three ERA. There we go. 143 whip still a little high though. And then Zach Williams, surprisingly good in terms of his potential, but not great whip there over two and over a six ERA. Not where you want it to be, but his ratings are still going up quite well. And, you know, he's 18 years old pitching in the major leagues. So this isn't, you know, the best method to actually make your players better. This is just part of the challenge of a rebuild like this. 250 with 10 home runs for Burgos. And he came in in the 50s. I'm honestly really happy with that. Um, and then Siebel here, minus seven contact versus lefties. Why are we getting all these minuses on uh, like the favorable hands for these players? Seems really odd. No triples or home or home runs for Siebel, but um, getting some power still in a really bad spot. Still probably going to be mostly a contact hitter at the major leagues now into the next draft right away getting to pick number seven i had three players that i thought maybe were worth that seventh pick and this is the year i started to let i can't remember i might have actually been last year again i'm doing this commentary post this is either the first or second year i turned scouting on auto i think it was the first and this is the best player that the game had scouted for me and this picture looks insane but i was very weary when i saw this and when i was commenting live on it like overall 82 to 92 is that real like his floor for overall so i even though this player looks incredible I was a little bit skeptical as to the validity of that. But like the best option after that, I thought was like Richie Franklin, who has the potential to be a knockout hitter, potential to have some speed on him. Uh, not going to be a great fielder or anything, but could have some good arm accuracy and strength. So do we take the guy that we didn't scout, who has super wide ranges, or do we take the guy that looks absolutely insane, but I'm pretty sure that the scouting report is wrong. I, when I changed over to, you know, the auto scouting, I tried to get more balanced scouts just to avoid situations where we'd have like a scout with like 62 pitcher scouting pitchers just to maybe avoid super inaccurate, but just on the off chance, that this player really was as good. Like, let's just take these ratings. If he comes out 90s velocity over 85 break, over like in the 80s for walks per nine, 80s hits per nine. That's if that's real, you have to take that player, right? It's just ah, so hard to believe that it is, but um, you know, if, if we don't take this player and he ends up actually having those ratings. You gotta kick yourself, right? Where I feel like if you don't take the center fielder, you can say, well, his range was, you know, 35 points. How was I supposed to know he was gonna be this good? Yeah, it looked like the potential. He also had the potential to be just 
mid, like not great at all. So decided to go with Juan Flores. Just like, I didn't believe he was going to be as good as his ratings suggested he was, but I felt like the scouting report's not going to be that off, is it? Uh, I did, you know, flip-flop between the two several times, but uh, ended up going with one floors there. And we'll see if that was the right decision, but... Continuing with this draft now in the competitive balance round. There's a guy here in left field. Needed another outfielder. You know, floor of 74 potential. Looking around, it just seemed like the right pick. Since we got pitcher in the first round, decided to try and snag ourselves a position player with our second pick. Right back up on the clock. Just one pick. Later, Marshall Black, our scouts had as a top 10 player in the class. But I wasn't just going to make this pick without, you know, checking around the league, seeing if there's somebody that maybe we liked more. Also, just like a reliever this high isn't always the best pick. Also, he's high ranked on our board, but... He's not very highly scouted, you know? Um, decided to instead take a shot with a third baseman who had some power potential. Just wasn't super impressed with how things were scouted here. Uh, Inoho ended up being the pick. Felt like our scouts in the auto scouting didn't do all that great of a job, if we're being honest. The last guy in our top 100 on our team board here in Round four, just felt like I was left kind of stranded, not knowing what a good pick was a lot early in the draft. So, you know, if it's a franchise that you care about and you need good draft picks, I honestly wouldn't recommend doing auto scouting. It, um, like, even if we hit on the draft picks, which you'll see if whether or not we do, like, you're just taking a lot more guesses a lot earlier in the draft. You have a lot guy, more guys at like 40% scouted, which I felt like in previous scouting wasn't the worst thing to get a guy like the 40% scouted, 50, 60, 70. It was more like where you wanted it. But here I feel like if there's a guy that looks like that looks good, it's so much more beneficial in this game to get them, if not to 100% scouted, at least like 80. So the CPU just wasn't doing as good of a job as I would have liked with that so let's fast forward to signing day for these guys and here is our draft we actually weren't able to even get all of our draft picks signed but that starting pitcher was a total lie he's a 71 overall with a 71 potential i knew he was going to be something stupid like that but looking at our alternate option here richie franklin really good Power hitting center fielder, sure, but he doesn't have high potential either. Looks like either way, didn't really have good information on who was the best pick. Uh, Joel Ramo, he's actually pretty good though. Uh, 63 overall with 82 potential. I'll take that. But yeah, unable to sign three draft picks, including the guy that we picked third in the draft. I tried everything I could, gave people literally the max bar. And they were saying no, like... Oh, man, just the inability of the CPU to get the scouting right. It was a little bit frustrating in this first year of the auto scouting. Now here at the end of the season, 61 and 101. Still not able to get less than 100 losses here, but Buster Chavez came up. He was a September call-up. Wasn't able to get his AAA stats. I know they were really good, though. He was a sub-3 ERA in AAA. Brought him up at the end of the year. One of our best players already. Um, Zach Williams. Much better year here in year two. But, you know, the team still needs a lot of development um we got 
Archie Carlisle on the injured list. Debated whether or not I should turn injuries off. I ended up just keeping them on. But 37 home runs for Russ Spears here in the second year. Got over nine on the OPS. And so that's really exciting. Uh, in the offseason, I did sign him to 12 years at $20 million a year. Did the same here for Tony Hickman. Ended up front loading that. I don't know how long this franchise is going to last, but I just want to make sure that those two players are here for as long as it does. I'm not going to be going for another 12 seasons. That I can guarantee you. But uh, Tony Hickman was great against lefties. Again, for some reason, these guys are hitting better against the sides that they theoretically shouldn't. But, um, I mean, plus 12 contact, plus 12 power. I'm never going to complain about it, even if it makes a little bit less sense than maybe it should. 285 average, though. Awesome season to from Hickman. Um, you know, we got 240 from Carlisle, much better than his sub 200 first year. Basically a 7.5 OPS. Tom Wood here. ERA did increase quite a bit, but whip stayed relatively the same. Pretty Costa. Whip went slightly down. ERA went slightly up. So pretty similar in his first two years. Uh, Chavez had a very small sample size. He started five games. His AAA stats didn't carry over, but 5.470 ERA over a two whip. Again, small sample size, but uh, ho hopefully he can get those stats in a better place for his first full year in the major league. Uh, Scott Papp also ended the year on the injured list, so don't love that. Again, he's hitting better against righties than lefties. What does that even mean? He had over 300 on the year, though, so that's really nice. Malcolm Clemente, he had a better year in terms of ERA. Eaton did actually regress a decent bit, but his, you know, his ratings continue to climb, so that's okay. Gonzalez maybe is hit his peak. He does have seat potential, so we knew he wasn't going to be like this high-end level starter, but more of like a borderline MLB player Calzado had a terrible ERA, the first starting pitcher we ever drafted to this team. Uh, slightly better year hitting for Kevin Light, but not all that much. Does get over six on OPS though, so suppose that's something. Siebel here with a hot streak, and look at that. This is a guy that actually hit better against the lefties when you think he would. Plus 20 between his contact and his power. Nine contact, 11 power. Still hit decent against right. He's plus five in both. Um, had his first, you know, four home runs of his career this year. Got his average up to 270. Got his OPS over six. I'd like to get it even higher than that. But with 99 potential, you have to feel good that he will. Like those fielding ratings for first base make you want him to switch positions. But... He doesn't really have secondary positions in the infield that uh, you, you can switch into. Howard Burgos uh, didn't hit for much power versus righties, but power versus lefties up 11. Got five more home runs this year. Average was a little bit worse. OPS did increase, though. And so overall, I think it's hard to say that this team isn't going in a good direction. As we see Delgado with some increases here. I mean, forcing him into the MLB much sooner than, you know, would be ideal. But that's just the life of a rebuild like this. You're gonna get put in situations that maybe aren't ideal just because that's how the draft works in baseball, baby. Uh, you know, in a regular career, it might take, it would maybe take you three, four, five years to get in the MLB. Well, you're getting in the MLB in your right in your first season after the draft in this franchise. Let's get into the next year. Up to draft once more, getting the second pick this year and the top rated players are relievers again. So not exactly thrilled with the way that the CP was auto drafting. Also didn't want to put in the time to change it though so we're just gonna live with the results of what we get after getting 
completely lied to by our scouts last year, though. I was a little bit less inclined here in the second year to basically just listen to them and take who they thought was the best. I just did some digging on my own, thought, you know what? Find maybe a good hitter and take them. And I found this Ryan DeLowry, who looked to be a really good contact hitter and fielder. We needed shortstop as well. Obviously, really big ranges, but could even have, you know, high overall potential out there. Fat, so just decided to take the shot on the unscouted player at a position that we hadn't really drafted a high-end player. We got an 85 potential guy who's been high, but I think we can improve over that. So that's what we went for with our first pick in the draft. Here with the second pick, right back up here. I mean, Johnny Valentin, again, not a guy that we've really scouted, but was somebody that we discovered. Why did we discover him, find him as a top 50 player, and then not scout him? Oh, the CPU is so frustrating, man. You always discover like the top guys that you, that you, you always, excuse me, scout the top guys you discover. Goodness, man. Competitive balance round B between the second and third round gives us back-to-back -back picks. And we're just going to keep looking for the best guy, whether we've scouted them or not. Um, went for, tried to, you know, go for guys that we scouted last year. Didn't really work out for us. And so didn't want to get caught making the same mistake twice. And these, you know, choices are a lot more difficult, though, when <laughs> you don't have scouting to back you up. It did make drafting a lot harder, but, um, you know, there, it's maybe a little bit more intrigue because you truly don't know what you're getting. Whereas, like, when you're using high efficiency and high rated pitchers, like, and make them do the right thing, it's gonna work out ended up just simming this draft we had no idea about anybody so let's see how we did when we get to the signing stage ended up putting these you know sign draft picks on auto too and i wanted to see if that actually resulted in players getting signed but one thing i want to do before we start looking at picks and i did it first in this year was just to look at the state of the team still last ranked in the league with last ranked pitching i think we're still growing a lot at pitching so especially you know getting that ace potential guy last year um speed we're fine at but then we're around 25th in defense contact power still a lot of guys developing obviously you're gonna try to add more talent but i think with the guys we already have on hand we're gonna get better now Delari ended up being a, a really good pickup for us. Uh, the guess ended up going well for us. Valentin, I mean, starting off 74, not bad at all, but doesn't really have potential to get much better. Setting the signing of the scouts, uh, the, the picks, excuse me, on auto seemed to work a lot better than actually scouting on auto. But Delari, gonna be a good fielder, doesn't have the massive arm, but contact hitter, fielder, at shortstop, you know, bats with his left hand, so he should be able to hit right. He's pretty good. And then an A potential left fielder. And then, you know, even a 90 potential all the way down with the last pick. I'm going to call that a success. End of the season, 66 and 96. A little bit of an upgrade. Maybe not quite as big of an improvement that I was hoping for this year, though. But, I mean, the arrow is still trending upwards. Spears is a 99. We got our second 90 overall. Mid-80s for Carlisle. Um, I definitely feel like we're, you know, we're an MLB team at this stage. We're not the best one, obviously, but certainly an MLB team. Just 
judging off quick glance though, it doesn't look like a lot of people had excellent years. Let's go in and look player by player though. Minus five power versus lefties down below 70 power versus lefties for Spears. Don't love it, still at 34. You know, Homer saw it 900, you know, OPS. Hickman steadily increasing. He went down in both average and home runs though. Carlisle, some good increases, but his average went down. His home runs did go up though. He joins the 30 club in terms of home runs. Uh, Tom Wood, his ERA went up, whip as well. Freddy Costa, ERA went up, whip as well. Uh, Chavez, his first full year, not great numbers, not like atrocious either for, you know, your first year in the bigs. Some regression here from Pap. Ratings still going up though. Clemente, hey, we found somebody that actually improved, but his whip did go up. So how much of an improvement? I don't know. Elton Eaton, fantastic year for him. Sub two ERA, sub one whip. That's what you like to see. Not a lot of people are having better years than last, but you know, we did have a better record despite a lot of people maybe looking like they regressed. Uh, some of these guys, you know, in the middle of, on the middle of the team, Spacito had a really similar year, but Steve Seibel here, he continues to increase his average and his ratings are going up. Gets over the seven OPS for the first time in his young career. Uh, Gonzalez under 200 batting average though contact went down because of it so you know with all these guys that looking like they regressed especially maybe not as much regression there's a couple pitchers that regressed but I feel like there were more pitchers that actually got better looks like our bat just ran a little bit cooler this year but I think a lot of people underperformed what they can do and they've shown they can do Burgos just down all the way to 200, you know. I think these players that have shown they can do more. So I, I, I'm pretty hopeful despite, you know, the fact that maybe things don't look great right now, that it, it was just a relatively cold year. And that if we get players playing to like more of their average, we could see a pretty significant jump next year. Um, that was kind of the feeling I left this with plus 10 power. Um, is nice for Joel Ramo, who, who he was a September call up for me. But uh, let's get into the next year of this franchise where my face cam and live commentary does return. Into the draft once again, we got a guy who opted out of his exam, but he is the MLB number one guy. He's 18 years old. Oftentimes that means he's going to be generational. If we can get to the third guy, I mean, if we can't win a World Series in this rebuild and get three and we get three generational guys. It might not be possible, honestly. We got a guy who wasn't generational, but 99 potential first base. This guy is generational second base, third base, and center field. I mean, maybe we could get better pitching. We haven't had the best pitching luck in this series, but I mean, come on now. Next prospect, oh, we got a catcher here. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down on Harold Wade. Let's, let's draft him. Um, we're up again. Uh, this is the next best scouted guy, honestly. Really? This is, this is what we're dealing with here, 72 to 87. Sure, we'll get another bullpen arm. Why not? Why not get another bullpen arm? That's all we have scouted, baby. Our scouts are so good. On their second baseman, I feel like we need more we need more starting pitcher just arms in our this guy's floor is 80 is uh 80 potential. So let's oh I need to let's forget that you gotta like manually go and get to your next pick let's see here we go Chris Hernandez welcome to the squad can I get some more pitcher arms in the team let's go all here we got a second baseman who 
You scouted enough to know his interest? Why not? Welcome to the squad. Switch hitter. I'm down. Um, now... Nobody's in the top 100. We've scouted one guy. Center fielder. Welcome to the squad. And that's the draft. See you at signing. Let's go ahead and take our yearly look at where the team stands before the next class of rookie come, rookies come in. We are no longer the worst team in MLB. I think I've decided that we will go basically until we can't afford the team anymore because people are just getting too expensive. They're all hitting free agency. That's probably... Some, some guys are hitting arbitration for the first time. So we're probably talking like three more years is about all we could do. And if we don't win, you know, a World Series in, in 10 years, we might just call it off. We do get ourselves a nice generational prospect that will help because he'll be able to help as soon as next year. Um, I don't think anyone else here is going to play an immediate impact. I think Chris Hernandez can be good eventually. Estrada as well. But uh, will they be good in time enough to help this team? I don't know. I'll fill it out. If we need to go a little bit more, if we're at like 10 and we seem like one year away, maybe I'll do an 11th. But at some point, you just got to call a rebuild. A rebuild. I, I got what I wanted from this rebuild, um, which is, you know, figuring, figuring out exactly... You know how the scouting works i feel like I, I have a lot better understanding now of how scouting works in this game so honestly I, th I think a big part of the reason that maybe things haven't gone exactly our way is just because we haven't we're we're not like putting everyone in the best position to succeed in this rebuild we're throwing them into mlb earlier than a lot of these guys should have been and so that's probably a big reason why Maybe it's taking so long. At the end of the season now, we finished 79 and 83. Like I said, I thought a pretty big jolt was coming as a lot of guys just had down years last year. Almost finished 500. Are we a year or two away as all these guys are still, well, not all of them, but a lot of them are still on an upward trajectory. Russ Spears got to 40 home runs. Uh, 99 RBIs, over 900 OPS. Hickman, really big upgrades here. Now, 97 contact versus lefties. He's turned into, oddly enough, a better left hitter than a right hitter. But 943 OPS, by far his best. Um, see, last year we were seeing like some, some worse. Now we're seeing some best. Best ERA, best whip for Tom Wood. Um, still not great for Carlisle. But uh, we got a shortstop that maybe you can take over his spot sooner rather than later. Sub three ERA for Buster Chavez. Love to see it. Not the best whip, but um, I think that'll continue to get better. Sub three ERA again. Nice whip to go along with it. Alton Eaton wasn't fantastic last year. Not quite as good this year, but still, I'll take it. Uh, Costa had like a really good start to his year and he just continues to rest. Um, Pap now has C potential, so that's not very good. It looks like he is done uh, improving. Ryan DeLowry at shortstop. He is, he went back down to AAA. I don't know why. We, we called him up for September call-ups. Um, didn't hit very well against lefties. No real surprise there. I think he's going to eventually take over that Shortstop spot. Um, Siebel, let's take a look at him. He didn't have a good year of contact versus lefties, unfortunately. Not his best year on the squad, but uh, overall, I think we are getting better. Better year for Zach Williams. One of our most intriguing relievers, but Del Gaudio is our only one with a potential. He had his best year, so I think, honestly, this team can be pretty close to breaking out. You know, we only have a few years left before people start to get really expensive. We might be able to, you know, 
win something in that time. It looks like Burgos has slowed down his progression though, despite still having a potential. What the scouts think is the fifth best player is on the board. I don't love what I'm seeing in terms of a hitter here, if I'm being honest, but I also don't know if I love what I'm seeing in general. This guy looks okay here. Some str low strikeout per nine though. Um, this starting pitcher looks good. I feel like we just need pitching more than we need position players at the moment. Maybe, hmm, it's, it's tough to say. Any like not ranked players anywhere near? Not really. Discovery has taken a big dip on this team. Um, I feel like a swing and a hit at pitcher would be more beneficial to this team than a swing and a hit with a guy who just doesn't look like a very good hitter. So I'm just gonna take Crocker here, see see how it goes. In terms of team rank here at 48, we don't have anybody higher than we're just gonna take a bunch of swings at, at starting pitcher, I think, this draft. See if any hit. I think that's I think I, I, I'm chill with that strategy. Um Honestly, uh, let's go Justin White next. Why not? We have a not ranked guy here. Let's take him, Blanca. Nobody left. Scouted nobody else, so we scouted that pitcher. Um, maybe we could go reliever now, though. Just keep let's let's get some arms in the bullpen. And now it's we're in what round five now. Maybe we can take one swing. Add another position here. Let's go. Let's short stop. Just just taking swings. This catcher. Probably not. This pitcher. Man, he's a, he's a not ranked guy. Why not? So we drafted mostly pitching in this draft. Um, let's see if anybody was good. We are here. End of the regular season. I just got an achievement. Because for the first time ever in this game, uh, I just achieved a yearly goal. I thought I was going to say made the playoffs. We did. Uh, win the division and make the playoffs. Let's see how the boys did, where ratings are at. 333 average, 36 home runs for Spears. Continues to be very solid, over a 1,000 OPS. Hickman, 318 average, by far his best. Hit 30 home runs, 976 OPS. Buster Chavez, 385 ERA, 135 whip. We'll take that all day. Tom Wood coming out here, slinging that rock. Clemente, solid season. Carlisle, he he played shortstop. Eaton was our closer, not bad from him. Costa, back to where we like to see him. Uh, Jonas Pereira, the, the guy that we just drafted. 267 with 18 homers, you know, as a rookie. Take that all day. Andreas Calzado. He's, you know, for where he's at in the rotation at this point in time, I don't mind it. Ryan DeLowry. Um, just not getting a ton of hitting from our shortstop position, but um, that, that's fine. You know, still still a developing position. Uh, Sable looks like he got back on draft. Absolutely, he did a good contact season. 14 homers, 294 average. Got that OPS up near eight. You like to see it. Definitely starting to see, you know, what looks like a playoff caliber team. It took a long 
time. 2-3-5 ERA. Finally, Zach Williams, one of my favorite, you know, probably him and Delgadio have been like the guys that we've been hoping could lead our bullpen. Starting to see some decent seasons there. And then, of course, our closer, Elton Eaton. Uh, let's look at Burgos here. Got that average up compared to where he was at last year. Got that OPS up over seven. Um, so, yeah, I think we're definitely looking at a playoff caliber team here, of course. Um, we left, left field looks a little rough, but uh, we actually have two center fielders that, are, that one of them play left field. I don't even know who plays left field on this team. Let's, let's take a look. Left field is played by, what is played by Ramos? Who does? Whatever, you know, I don't even care. So let's get ahead and see who we're going up against. We're, we will go up against the Nationals. Can we win our first ever playoff series looking good so far? And we do. Let's go. Going up against the Phillies now. One and one. This isn't like the... Uh, World Series, is it? is it? Are the playoffs that short? I don't think so. All right, we have won the National League Championship and we'll be taking on the Tigers or the Mariners in the World Series. So just, what was it, two seasons ago, we were just barely missing losing 100 games. So when you have a team this young, you can break out quite quickly, win the first game against the Tigers, lose the second, lose the third, tie it up two and two lose so can we stay alive in this we can we got a game seven you know what we're gonna do we're gonna come in and we're not gonna actually play but we will you know manage and see game seven of the world series can this pirate squad come up and win it all? Looking at our lineup here, I mean, you got that three, that that uh, three, four, five right there are three generation players right down the middle of the order. You love to see it. Honestly, if it wasn't for like generational players, I don't know how long it would take to use the draft only to build a contender in this game. Look, he's just takes so, so long to make that They do a baseball too, so it's not like an unrealistic part of the game. It's just... Um, whoa! What am I? I, I want to like do... This. Let's, uh, let's see how we start out. We'll have a zero and then to start Malcolm Clemente pitching for us. They get a hit and they get a run. Okay. Down 0-1 after the first inning. And we get points up on the board. I gotta see. I don't even know what this is. Um how do I see who hit that other oh, player stats? We got I wanna see the game log. Game log, there it is. Okay. Box score. There we go. So we got two RBIs. Burgos, our catcher out here doing things. This is what I want to see. Um, knocking into the runs. The light out in the left field. Locking in another. Let's continue. See what we can do on offense here. Not much there in the third. Pitching wise, good third inning. Fourth inning. We got a walk, but single to start out, but then three straight flyouts. With a solo home run. Three, two, through five innings. Three up, three down on both sides. They're in the sixth. Offense really slowing down here in the middle innings, but so is theirs. One run lead. We get a solo home run from Spears. 
the first ever draft pick in this series. We hold a two run lead in the ninth. Can we win the World Series? We extend the lead to three runs. It's looking good. And the Pirates will win the World Series here in Game 7. I don't even know how many years this is. Yes, I heard Dave Roberts as my manager. Did everything I could to get help. This team was like a year away from getting really expensive, so I'm glad we were able to get it in this frame. I was running out on this roster. But using only the drafts, we were able to take a zero overall team. Make them World Series champions. Let's go. Um, yeah, I honestly think it's it's the generational prospects that really carry the team. Like we weren't even that good of power, and that's with <laughs> drafting two generational prospects. Um, but team made up solely of draft picks and a deep win championship which is good news for i guess our athletics franchise because i feel like a large portion of the foundation of that team will be built through the draft We're not gonna have a ton of you know budget to kind of build a contender through the agency but if i've learned anything from here we're gonna need at least one if not two generational prospects if we want to build a contender out of our athletics franchise so uh, Howard Burgos, you know, the, the home run early in the game that brought in two runs. Wins player of the game. Uh, Hickman, he got he, he got a multi-hit game, had a home run himself. That was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, of course, I have to do like a lot of stuff off camera in, in, in a video like this, but... Uh, this taught me a lot about how the draft works in LLB The Show 23. Hopefully I can translate that into our athletics franchise. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be back soon with athletics franchise. And I see you then.